Eskura Podcast for Rosenberg right here. The podcast that's designed to educate, entertain, and encourage my guest tonight, the one and only Marco Kopik. Thank you so much for being here, my friend. It's a pleasure and honor to see you. Bang, bang, bang. Thank you so much. Have a seat. Tonight, we are going to dissect his story. An investor that is making move not only in the Passaic County, but in the nation. Marco Kopik. Today, we're going to dissect his life. And he's going to drop some jewels on wow and how things are moving today. Thank you so much, my friend. You're welcome. And it's a pleasure. Stay tuned. Marco Kopik. SQR Podcast. Score Rosenberg. One. We're going to chop this up with you. Eskira Podcast for Rosenberg, the podcast that's designed to educate, entertain, and encourage. And tonight, we're doing just that. We're going to slice into the story of my guest tonight, Marco Kopik. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I know, I, I, I'm aware that your time is valuable as a real estate investor. And I would like to use the word mogul. Mm -hmm. since I've known you and you know as we talk behind the scenes about some of the stuff you've done because you conduct yourself as a mobile mogul you have accomplished things similarly as a mogul and the forecast for you is even bigger than that so thank you for spending the time with us sir well, it's my pleasure squirrel tonight I want to hear your story I've known you for years which is kind of tough how I'm going to conduct this podcast because I know some of the answers already. But as a friend and a business partner and as a client of yours, we, you know, we've worked on stuff together. I've always been fascinated on your drive, your discipline, and how you've able to accomplish so much in such a short period of time. And we talk behind the scenes of some of the things your father implemented, and that's what we're going to do today. So let's go back to the beginning. Got it. Start. Marco Kopik, investor extraordinaire and your dad your family when you were born what was the makeup like when you were put on this beautiful earth what was the who, what were you born into <laughs> i was born into a mother that worked in a factory and my father was a immigrant actually that came from uh, croatia mm. and he worked in a factory too and he was such a hard worker that he worked for a jewish family and uh, when the people in a factory went for strike because they wanted a, a higher wages, he decided not to do that. He needed that job. So he worked there. During the strike? During the strike. He didn't want to strike with the other people. So basically he worked there. And uh, the Jewish uh, guy, he really appreciated that. And he offered my father the buildings that were across from the factory. And a bar and a go-go bar. <laughs> Offered it him for sale. For sale. And at that time, my father worked a lot of overtime. And he started this whole empire with $70,000. Now, back then, 70000 was a big money. That was a lot of money. What year was this, by the way? Four. 1940s, maybe, yeah. circa? Well, my father is 84 years old. Okay. I, I'm not exactly, but the, this is the story that him and my mother told me. And what town was this? Passaic. Yep, I was born and raised in the city of Passaic. I'm 4th Street, the ghetto. That's what they want to call me. <laughs> so I grew up in a ghetto. Wow. So dad has this opportunity. By the way, any brothers and sisters in the family? Yes. I have two stepbrothers, which they passed away. And I have two brothers and three sisters. All right. You know what? I need to stop that because when you mentioned that, and I realized that you don't have a Heineken in front of you. Uh -huh. My apologies to my sponsor would be admit that we're having this conversation without that so i had to stick a pin there because i wanted to toast on your brothers who have passed away so to do that could you turn around and grab a heineken from that beautiful refrigerator that we do keep stacked right there bong and we do have the double zeros and the light in there but you know i know you want a real heineken so let's pop this open put that there and continue <laughs> this you. conversation thank you for being uh, here mark my pleasure two brothers who passed away yep uh, one of them was a real estate investor. His name was John. And my second brother, he was a chef. He didn't like real estate. And these are older brothers? These are my older. My, my father was married twice. Okay, okay. So uh, my sisters are teachers here in Patterson for many years. And my oldest sister, she's uh, in Maryland. She's in the Navy. She's a nurse. Oh, wow. Salute, salute. So mom and dad, you grew up in a household with 
four kids, correct? No, it was six of us. Okay, yeah. and you're right in the middle because you have a um, younger sister. Yeah, it's just three, three boys and three girls. Okay. Dad had the opportunity to purchase this property, and he does. He, he does. takes advantage of that. Yeah. You remember those times growing up with him being a landlord? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yep. And uh, him collecting rents and uh, working behind the bar. Sure, I do. Were you frustrated with, I'm sure as a kid growing up, you probably wanted to be out playing and, you know. By the way, you said they were Croatian. Yes. So coming to the U.S. with a different mentality, they wanted to build an empire. Yes. Do you remember back in that time, you know, some of the things that you were not allowed to do because you had to do the work? Or how did you feel about that at the time? Oh, it was pain. It was pain. <laughs> You know, my father was a very disciplined type of guy, and he loved church. He loves going to church. And oh, I had to go almost three, four times a week to church <laughs> and sing in a choir. <laughs> and I'm telling you, it was like, a, for me, I, I really didn't like it. Mm. But uh, one thing that he did teach me is discipline. You know, how to value stuff. Behind the scenes, we were talking, and you dropped a jewel on discipline. Yeah. And, um, you know, what I said to myself, when you said that, I wrote it down, but when you said it, I'm like, it sounded as if that was something that was planted in you from way back then. So growing up, what was middle school, high school? You know, you were a kid of, a, of immigrants, but you were born here. Yes. Where did you went to middle school? Oh, uh, I went to a Passaic, uh, number four school. Friends acclimated well with, you weren't bullied, what was that? No. no, you know what? I'm really not that friendly type of person. So if I had two or three people, uh, you know, that I kept as friends, but I'm, I'm really not that social. Okay. I, I, I focus at, uh, towards business. Okay. You know? And that, even at that age, you were that... Oh, yeah. Even at that age. Yep. I mean, I, I'm not sure if you know, I, I bought my first property at uh, 19 years old, cash. I paid it off. You know? Eskira podcast, Gore Rosenberg, Marco Kopik is my guest tonight. And you fast forward to that milestone, which is great, but I don't want to miss the things that got you up to that point. Got it. So let's skip through this. How were the grades in school? No, I was an honorable uh, kid. I actually, uh, I had no choice. Like I said, my father was a disciplined guy. <laughs> like you that. Know? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, my mother was active too, but my father was the bread and butter to the family. You know, and then uh, what happened is uh, at five years old, actually, he ended up selling everything. I was five years old, and, and my mother and him were going through a divorce, and I ended up living in Croatia. Yep. So, from Pasek yes. to Croatia. Yep. I ended up going to uh, Croatia, and then what happened is I came back when I was 14 years old. Hold up. What was the transition like? Do you remember landing in Croatia? acclimating in Croatia? What was that like? Listen, I didn't like it at all. I didn't like going to Croatia. <laughs> I, I, you know, at that age, I didn't even know what was happening. True. You know what? But uh, like I said, my father had tough skin. And uh, even at five years old, hey, you, we couldn't say nothing. Come on, you got to follow your dad and be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know what? Growing up, I have to... Uh, uh, my older sister took care of us. She did what she had to do. So we ended up coming back here because it was a war. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I ended up being four years in a war. And then we ended up coming back here and uh, we stayed with my aunt. And they all started all over again. My father's a hardworking guy and he had some money saved and he just started doing it all over. As we get ready to close on this segment, Mark, um, I, I am very impressed with your dad and how disciplined and how firm and that structure that he implemented. What's your dad's name? George Kopak. Let's give a shot. Let's give a toast <laughs> yeah, to George. Yeah. He's let's good. A, let's give a, shot, uh, a big, big shout out to George um, Kopak. And um, as we get ready to close, do you remember one distinctive thing or character that you remember back then that made you, now that you're looking back and say, damn, I can't believe my dad did that or said that or implemented that. Do you yeah. remember one thing? Yeah, I did. He told me if uh, somebody wakes up at 6 o'clock, make sure you wake up at 5 o'clock. Beat him to it. SQ Podcast, Gore Rosenberg. We'll be back after this break. Stay tuned. Jewel on the stake. One.
Welcome to the place when you want a good time Just the fun of the place when you joke on your mind And just the fun of when I want to see you done Just the fun of people drop down Don't forget to like, share and subscribe SQR Podcast, Scott Rosenberg, cracking in in segment two here with my guest, Marco Kopik, investor extraordinaire. And we're here to not only learn the secrets of his movement, but dissect why you've been moving like this. And, you know, as we talked about the family background, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, let me remind everybody, this podcast is designed to educate, entertain, and encourage. And I want people to be able to understand through this podcast and this this story sharing, that's what we're going to do today. So we wrapped up with that takeaway from your dad. If somebody wakes up at six, wake up at five. Wake up, beat them to it. And you've been at it, that mentality since then. For 21 years, that's my mentality. I'm, I'm a competitor. So you want to compete? You got the guy to compete. I'll figure out a way how to beat you. <laughs> <laughs> Transitioning through high school, and um, into, by the way, high school, puberty kicks in, the girl to distraction. How were you through that whole process? How was high school for you? Which high school did you go to, by the way? I went to Passaic High School. Okay. Yeah, well, you know, you know what it is? My father owned the go-go bar. So I really didn't care too much about, you know, whatever okay. I wanted to see. I was going to his bar. I saw it all. Okay. So you know what? That mentality was gone. <laughs> At 19 years old, I actually saw one of the most flyest women in there working. So at 19, like I said, uh, my father owned the go-go bar. You go there, you get a, you know, get a drink. Yeah. See the ladies <laughs> and keep yeah. moving. So you're exposed. You're, you know, so you're not really, you know, shocked to really experience because you've already done that. Yep. I it's amazing your dad on a go-go bar. How many kids at 19 would want to you know, have a dad who does that who's divorced? <laughs> yep. The real estate um, light switch, because you've been competitive. You've been a hustler. You've been ahead of the guy who's slipping. When did that happen? Well, you know what? I lived with my two brothers, and then I decided it was my time to move out. You know, we lived in my father's building, and we used to pay him rent. And it was cheap rent. <laughs> it was $200. Yo, I love that swagger right yeah, off the bat. It was $200 a month. But you know what? I couldn't live with my brothers. You know, they want to party at 3 o'clock. They have the ladies playing dominoes. And you know what? I'm a disciplined type of guy. So I decided to buy my first home, and it was on 33 East 13th Street in Patterson. And... Uh, I remember I bought it for sixty nine thousand dollars. And I sixty nine K. Sixty nine thousand. At what age is this? Nineteen. Where'd you get that money from? Did dad help you out? No, I actually all, all through life I just uh, I kept working uh, different jobs. Uh, I'm a plumber by trade. So what I kept doing is uh, installing boilers and uh, a whole bunch of side jobs. I just kept saving. So you bought this property cash? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Ask your podcast. Marco, we can't be casual about this. You're 19, mm -hmm. having access to approximately, I'm pretty much sure, more than 70K. Mm -hmm. And you said, let me buy a house. Yes. I bought my first home. And then uh, what I did was uh, fixed it up, refinanced it. And at that time, I pulled out around 320K, and I bought another property uh, in Patterson, and uh, I did the same thing with the other property, and in no time, I had a million dollars in cash in my own possession. Okay. Not only am I honored that you're being this vulnerable and honest with your journey, but let's go granular a little bit here on this, okay? I understand that you were... You saw the way your dad moved, you're influenced by that, and of course, you became more disciplined. I understand that you worked and earned and saved 69000 mm -hmm. You bought your first property. I understand all of that. But to be able to refinance, learn that game, where did that come from? Who put you on to, to I mean, where was that transition to become a more sophisticated investor come in? Oh, th there was a gentleman that told me the real estate side of the business. His name was Kevin. 
And uh, I met him on Godwin Avenue in Patterson. That's the hood. That's the hood. But I remember I got into an argument with a gentleman on a coffee shop. And I got a swag. I don't let, I'm not a pushover. And he beeped his horn and we made the connection. Kevin. He, he was Italian and he basically owned, I could probably say, 50% of Fourth Ward. Yep. And, and that's the hood. It is the hood. And he asked me, do I, uh, you know, do plumbing and all that? I said, yeah, sure, why not? So he gives me a whole bunch of keys and tell me, go ahead. I got a whole bunch of properties. <laughs> and that's what I did. I actually uh, managed and uh, got them all up running. And um, then what happened is I just saw how much equity is in all these properties. So I made a deal with him. Talk to me. Well, I, I was listening to what he was saying. I'm a good listener. And uh, I pick up on, a, on the game plan. That's when I got my game plan. It works. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I'm 21 at that time. Had to be. Had to be. Yep. 21 years old at that time. And now his property actually are all my property now. And how did I do that? It's uh, real simple. I made him sign some, uh, uh, what they call those, um, investors uh, contracts that basically, I'll get the properties up running, but uh, when I sell them, he gets his share and I get my share. So you're not being paid as a contractor, you're being paid as an investor or a co-investor, walking in with no money. No money. No money because uh, I realize he didn't have something that I have. Which was? Uh, discipline and know how to manage these properties in Fort Ward, Patterson. Escura Podcast, Gore Rosenberg. When you say something profound on the show, it's called dropping a jewel. You just drop a jewel right there. And I remember this. You brought me back. I'm going to speak far a little bit. I, I remember when we met. Mm -hmm. You treated me like that guy treated you. I yeah. remember that. You took me to the side. Yeah. You put some bugs in my ear. And you also said to me, um, listen, and it's not about owning a lot of properties. It's about managing the properties that you own. Yep. So somebody could own 20 properties and you could own five and manage them better and make more money than the person who owns the 20. That's the key. Escura podcast called Rosenberg. I had to dissect that jewel because Mark, you literally brought me back. No. to win okay so i kind of skipped ahead guys because you realize i did business with this guy and really got to, got to touch and apply some of the things you've learned that's fascinating that's how you got started that's exactly how i got started so at no time i had 80 properties in city of patterson and probably more than 80 i mean i lost count i didn't even know who paid me rent who didn't pay me rent because i was growing <laughs> at a, such a fast pace so what i started doing is hiring uh, uh people from straight and arrow you won't believe how many people are on drugs but have a trade. You just won't believe it. So number one, now I just started. Where are you going to get quality workers? Straight mm -hmm. and arrow. You have plumbers, electricians. Okay. These guys are going through some rough times. Still have a talent. Still yes. have a trade. Yep. But one thing, I respect them and they respected me. And their money was there every Friday or per day because... Sometimes they need it. They need it. But I'll tell you, I started fixing up these homes... And reselling them. Wow. Yep. Fascinating move. Great way to attach your caboose to that train. No, what's interesting is you're 21, 22. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't, um, I was going to ask where did that insight come from? But you've mm -hmm. been disciplined throughout all of this. Yes. It seems as if even through your teenage years, you haven't been. Let me, can I? We're about to close in the second segment. Can I bother you and ask you, was there one thing or one time you remember being distracted between your teenage years and your early 20s? Because I refuse to believe a handsome guy like you, moving like you're moving, stayed focused the whole effing time. Oh, I'll, I'll tell you. My distraction was a young lady named Damaris. <laughs> <laughs> And, and I'm not, and let me just tell you something. Uh, she was a gorgeous Puerto Rican lady. Gorgeous, gorgeous. And I met her on a job. And uh, you know what? I'm happy I got myself out of it because sometimes, hey, I probably would have went the other way. But uh, we were together at least for four years. And then 
It just didn't work out, and I'm happy it didn't work out. I got to be honest. <laughs> it's your podcast, Scott Rosenberg, Marco Kopik, allowing us to dissect his life and really, you know, and it was so funny. Thank you for being so vulnerable. We're going to take this quick break, come back, jump into segment three, and now we're going to find out what he's doing and the impact and the jewels that are going to be shared for you to impact and share your life. It's your podcast, Scott Rosenberg, Marco Kopik. Stay tuned. Wow. Thanks, bro. Wow. <laughs> Welcome to the place when you want a good time Just the fun and the place when you up on your mind And just the fun and we don't want to see you done Just the fun and the drop down Don't forget to like, share and subscribe SQR Podcast, Score Rosenberg cracking in Marco, I appreciate how honest you've been through this entire powwow hey. And up to this point all I've heard is, I realize I need to be disciplined, and you figured it out. Figured it out early. Yes, it's it's the most important thing if you want to make something out of yourself. Discipline, and don't be who you're not. I believe. I mean, sometimes you could drive around and a guy's in a Mercedes. Believe me, you could lease it with a pen. Go lease a Mercedes. <laughs> that doesn't mean you own it. Exactly. No, I like that. I like that. Lease yeah. it with a pen. Yeah. As you're building wealth and you're growing, you know, you said behind the scenes, you worked with the uh, Italian in, in, um, landlord mm -hmm. and positioned yourself where you just weren't getting a check. You were building an empire. You started owning those properties in Patterson. Yes. Which is, which is where we're located in Patterson, New Jersey here. It's your podcast, you know, and we're, you know, the next biggest thing coming out of Patterson. When you started growing... When did you say to yourself, or, or can I ask you this? Did you ever had a moment where you look back and goes, holy shit, this is what I'm really doing? Oh, yeah. Multiple times I said that. Yep. What happened? I, like, I started growing at a fast pace. I just couldn't keep up. To find good help, to find people to collect your rents. But remember, in my days, let's go back 20 years ago. Taxes were cheap in Patterson. You're talking about a two-family house was seventeen hundred dollars. There weren't thirteen thousand. Yeah, yeah. That was seventeen. So the profit margin was even greater on a on a, on a property, although the rents weren't really that high either. Well, I, I I I never look at rents to make money. I look at the equity. You have to play on the equity side. Uh, I used to rent so cheap just to. So my properties could be secure and let them take out their own garbage and maintain the property less headaches for me but the equity is what i was really after so somebody is listening to this podcast or watching this and they go what does equity mean well equity is uh, just when you buy a stock for a penny and now it grows uh, in two three days to a dollar same thing with a property you buy it for fifty thousand and uh if you sit on it long enough, it'll be valuable probably three times than what you paid for. So the difference of what I bought it for and what it's worth, that's my equity. Yes. <clears throat> Which you could cash out anytime you want on the equity. The ability to learn about that process of the real estate game didn't come from that Italian guy. No, no. This, uh, I, I met a banker in Manhattan. So what happened is that once I started getting involved in business, I stopped actually, I lost most of my friends because, um, you know, I didn't want to go to a bar and drink beer. I was so focused on working and I had to get up 5.30 in the morning, go to Home Depot, meet the contractors and uh, on and on. So I started uh, every Thursday, I used to go to Manhattan in a business district uh, where all the bankers used to sit there. Now, the dinners were expensive, but uh, I decided that's the chance I'm going to take. And I used to sit there and pick their brains. Mm. And uh, they used to teach me about lending, borrowing, uh, uh, how the whole banking system works. So now that I know how to buy the properties, I know how to fix them, I learned the lending part. Mm. So now... I went home and I mastered it all. <laughs> you know, you did it quickly. I did it very quickly. It's, uh, but like I said, uh, it, it was a good journey. You know, I love learning. 
So that was one of those things that I learned and uh, I just got good at it. Can I ask you, as you've grown and, you know, made these exponential steps and the wisdom of taking yourself out of like the Patterson Passaic era to go to Manhattan and uh, surround yourself with wiser heads or bigger heads. Do you remember a time when you experienced a loss or a shakeup in your growth process that may have kind of shook you off your path? Yes. Uh, number one, it will be a, a lady. And number two, it will be family. And what do I mean by that? Is that sometimes you grow some so fast that if the people around you are not growing with you, I, I don't. They start getting either jealous or start doing some crazy stuff to prevent or, you from keep growing. Exactly, or trying to set you back. But you know, I'm strong enough, so I started cutting everybody off. You know, I started spending more time by myself because I had a goal to accomplish. Wow. If you ask me today, do I have a whole bunch of ladies? Hey, absolutely. I got the money. <laughs> so guess what? Now I have the money. I can have whatever I want. But you were disciplined in that time. Yes, I was disciplined. Wow. I had one focus. Make the money. Stack it. And real estate was that avenue. I think real estate is the number one avenue in America if you want to get to wealth. You just have to get into it uh, the, at the right time. And get out at the right time, too. That's the key. So here's what I'm going to bring to the forefront. Um, you were the catalyst. Without even knowing it, but through some friends and some connection, you were... I bought my first home in the Fourth Ward on 12th Avenue. God. And I got to know you through some similar friends, and you sold me quite a few homes after that. Yeah. And one of the things I treasured through that journey is you weren't just... Here, sign here. See you later. As a matter of fact, you know, you didn't show up at the closing. Or, you know, you, we developed a relationship. And through that, you shared with me mm -hmm. certain wisdoms. And I remembered you telling me when to get out of the game. Yep. And that's key. Because people think, well, real estate, oh, I got to buy, I got to buy. You have to know also when to get out. Yes. Prior to the market crashing, you smelled something coming. You came to me. You said, squirrel, sell those houses. I said, Marco, screw you. These are the houses when I get my kids through college. You smirked, just like you did just now. Yeah. You did. Yeah. However, what was that what was that sixth sense that went off for you to sense that? Well, you know what? There's only so much that the price of a house can go up. So either you could wait and be a little bit more greedy and say, hold on, let me get the other five, ten, or twenty grand out of that house. Or you could say, okay, time is now. Let me cash out. So that's what I did. I made a move. And I liquidated everything, even my own personal house. <laughs> that's nuts. I sold every single property I had. <laughs> even your personal property. Yes. Yes. I sold my personal property and I rented a two-bedroom apartment. And I was fine with it. I was just enjoying traveling. And a year and a couple months later, I was in Cancun, Mexico. And I said, whoa, I'm right. It just tumbled overnight. Wow. Yeah. And now you're liquid yes. and are able to take advantage of the foreclosures. That's exactly what I did. I was all liquid. I have no mortgages on none of my properties. So what I did was now, instead of owning 80 properties, you have enough to own 360 if you want. Wow. Yeah. What's dad's mentality when he sees you moving at this level at that time? He told me to retire early, uh, get to a level where I'm comfortable, uh, set a limit. Everything has to have a limit. Ask your podcast, Core Rosenberg, what a jewel. Because in our society, we're told, get more, get more, get more. Say that again, my friend. No, you have to have a limit. And uh, that's one of the things I learned from my own man. It's, uh, you know, you don't want to work all your life and die without enjoying life. So by having a limit and accomplishing certain things in your life where you say, okay, I'm happy who I am. You have to be happy who you are. Not who cares what people think, you know? Because, uh, you know, 90% of it is all fake, you mm, know? Like, another jewel. Like uh, if, if you ever lived in one of those nice uh, Montclair Heights sections, you know, that's where my house is. And uh, I don't see my neighbors till 7.30 at night. I'm sitting home watching Fox News. Or CNN. 
But honestly, there's nobody in my neighborhood. Because they're out working. They're out working because, number one, they can't afford those homes. They bought those homes for a million dollars, and I know they can't afford them. Because they want to compete with the Jonas. However, you have built your wealth. Yes. And you're able to move into that neighborhood. Yes. Which I don't like here. I'm actually going to sell my home. Why don't you like that neighborhood? Well, I own a Cape Cod, a little small house in Passaic Park, and... I kept it all my life, and you know that little four bedroom, two bathroom makes me happy. <laughs> <laughs> it does. It makes me happy. Yeah, so, so Mark, here's what's so profound about that perspective on life, and mm -hmm. I salute you for sharing it. Yeah. The average person with the access to the resources you have mm -hmm. is on a yacht, is globe trotting, is Instagramming, is doing all these things. Beside, number one, staying below the radar. And no, thank you so much for being so transparent and fair and honest. Yeah. My dude, I remembered um, you and I having a talk and the market had crashed. Uh -huh. And I came to him like, Mark, fuck, I can't believe everything that I own is now upside down. And it, I got to admit, I thought that you came from a established family that gave you somewhat of a if it wasn't a golden spoon a silver spoon mm -hmm. and then you made something with it that's exactly how i thought no now that i've learned your story you pulled up your bootstrap created your own lane and you've been honest and fair and sharing those wisdoms because you did you did with me and i didn't apply that for mm -hmm. some reason and it couldn't it, i can't say it's because i didn't come from that family it's because you you applied something you saw something and you disciplined yourself. As we get ready to close on this, I want to ask you a couple of things. Now, at this level, how old are you, by the way? I'm going to be 40 years old, February. Let's, let's cheers to that. Okay. Let's, let's cheers to that. <laughs> Being aware as you are, what's on the agenda for Marco Kopic? Well, you know what? The older you get, you have different game plan and different thoughts. What I really want to do is just uh, enjoy life, maybe get involved in some uh, volunteer work, mm. uh, maybe even teach people how to do real estate, you know? Um, so Everybody's so, doing that right now. Come on. Yeah, DJ Envy coming out with some, st some stuff. You got a lot of people out here just, you know, you know, who are gurus, and I use the air quotes. I mean, because they're they've applied their their they have played they have applied their processes and it's working, so they want to share it. Well, uh, hold on. It all depends uh, what view you want to look at it. When the properties were real cheap, how come they weren't asking uh, the public to get involved? Then they want you to get involved because the market will crash maybe a year and a half from now. You so, think that's going to happen? Absolutely. Every ten years, in my lifetime, I saw it crash two times. Okay, so, let's slow down. It crashed in 2005, 2000, no, 2007 is when it crashed. Yeah, but there was one before that. It was. 10 years from 2007, mm -hmm. it's 2017. We're now 2019. Mm -hmm. Based on your, your feeling, or your, you're telling me there's another crash coming up. Yes. Uh, most people know about it that are in real estate. So, of course, uh, people are going to get on TV, say, get involved, get involved. They only want to burn your credit. That's exactly what they're going to do, pull out the equity and run. And if you want to get involved now, is the wrong time to get involved in real estate. Ask your podcast. We're dropping jewels right now. Please stay focused. It's the wrong. Because remember what you said. There's a right time to get in and there's yes. a time to get out. Yeah, it's the wrong time right now. To get in. Well, right now, uh, if you want to buy your own personal home, that's something different. Interest rates are low, of yeah, course. Right, right. Or you're going to go live in a nice area, pick a two good garage, get a swimming pool because the interest rates are low. <laughs> and you can really negotiate that. But if you're going to say you bought a property in Patterson or Paseco or any one of them for investment, it's a wrong time to invest. Let's talk about those neighborhoods you just mentioned. The podcast where we are, we're located in Patterson. Yeah. There's a major investor in town right now. Okay. That's buying everything that's not nailed down. Okay. Are you telling me this guy's loco? He's building on every lot. 
And we're not talking about a two family. He's building multiple units. Are you telling me this guy's nuts? What is what I mean, the market's about to crash based on your perspective. And I'm being devil's advocate because when you told me the last time it was gonna crash, it did crash. Yeah. Well, you know, everybody got different ideas or different views. But uh number one, whoever he is, uh is there anybody particular or Well, I mean, my guy Florian Management is moving out here like a Yeah well, juggernaut. Well, you know what? I mean, maybe you see something different. Okay. In, in my, my lifetime, I don't think uh, there's that many people that can change Fourth War and First Ward. And uh, there's a reason behind that. Number one, you have to start creating $20, $30 an hour jobs if you want to change an area. So you could build brand new homes, buildings, but if the people are making $8 an hour, Fourth Ward is Fourth Ward and First Ward is First Ward. The economics don't add up. Economics don't add up. Which if you look at it, TRA, Section A. Which are all these social programs that these tenants have access to. And uh, they're all in Fourth War and First Ward if you look at it. You know, so uh, there were more bigger investors uh, before my time and during my time. But maybe he's Einstein. Maybe he'll do and I give him credit. I, I like how I like the tongue in cheek Einstein remark there. Thank you so much. As we get ready to close on this, Mark, and um, you know, we call you Mark, you know, your actual name is Marco Kopek. Uh, we get ready to wrap on this, Marco. Um, if I give you the magic wand, which I, you really don't even need it right now because it's not about the money. And I found this out mm -hmm. money doesn't make you wealthy, the mindset does. Yes. I give you a magic wand. You got two wishes. The first wish. What's your first wish? Anything you want in the world, anything you want to do, boom. Anything, any impact you want to make, your first wish. My first wish, it will be in Patterson to make the neighborhood safe, like quality of life. I believe in quality of life. That will be, uh, you know, uh, I, I was here almost 17 years of my life. I lived in Patterson, actually, and I'm telling you, the quality of life, they just talk a good game, but they never change it. Mm. And the second thing that I wish is that uh, if they could just uh, bring some factories or some good employment for the people of city of Patterson. You know, um, they, like I said, uh, these politicians, they just talk a good game. Yeah. And you know what? The older I'm getting you realize it's all a game, you know? A game that you have figured out. Yeah, so uh, they tell you they're gonna help you out, they really don't. Rents are sky, I mean, you're talking about Patterson, rents are fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars Yeah, it is. Well, how are you gonna afford that with $8 an hour job? I just, yeah. The numbers don't add up. So, wow. uh, you know what? Those are the two things that I would like. I, I appreciate the fact that you answered every, not answered, but you shared your journey because this wasn't an interrogation. You shared your journey. And I want to just thank you for, for doing that. And as we get ready to wrap on this, um, the ability for you to share your knowledge with others, I think is key. Yeah. Where could people find you? What's your Facebook? What's your Instagram? If you have any, <laughs> please. Look, I want to fly under the radar. <laughs> <laughs> I always done it. Yes, that's so true. And another jewel, SQR Podcast called Rosenberg. As we close, Marco Kopik, investor extraordinaire, we dissected his life. And he allowed you to understand that wherever you're coming from, you can apply discipline. Score Rosenberg, SQR Podcast, Marco Kopik. Thank you, sir. One. <laughs> Just be fun, I win, I want to see you done Just be fun, I feel the drop done 
Don't forget to like, share and subscribe